G'day, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be having a look at this 3D Connection Space Mouse. This is a wired version, obviously as you can see it's USB powered and controlled via that or it inputs into the computer and whatever system you're using through that. Got a nice little cable and the actual Space Mouse itself. So this is a brand new one, new model, super nice, clean, shiny, nice one there. Basically, it has a really nice and heavy machined metal base with nice rubber sort of feet padding on the bottom that just grips to whatever surface it's sitting on really well so it can be moved around really nicely without the mouse actually moving. Two buttons on each side, button there, button there, and then we've got the actual mouse. So this bit here that actually actuates and acts as that input into the computer. So this is actually quite similar to a mouse I took apart not that long ago. So this is a wireless version, but an older model. So you can see the shape is slightly different. The wired one is circ more circular, so this one's more circular. This one's got that slightly different shape to it. But other than that, pretty similar. The only real big difference between the two mice is that this one here is wireless, so it'll have a battery inside, or it has a battery inside. I'll link that video as well up at the top and in the description, so make sure you check that out as well to see what the difference is. Put that on the side there, and then this one here, again, as I sort of said, it's just wired, so it's not going to have a battery inside. Well, I don't think it'll have a battery inside it, no reason really for it to, but I expect all the actual inner workings of it to be pretty much the same. So by saying that, let's just get straight into it. So the other one just had a couple of screws hidden underneath this, rubber sort of padding so I assume they haven't changed that so that's just a rubber ring with, with an adhesive on top which comes off pretty easy doesn't actually rip anything but then there's an extra little thin just a just a thin sort of layer on, underneath that as well not really sure why that's there Actually, I'm not going to go ripping all that apart. I can just see there's these little pockets in there where the screws are going to hide. So I'll just cut those out. So again, not exactly sure why they did that. This extra sticker on top. I don't see why that rubber ring couldn't just stick straight onto whatever that plastic sort of base there is. But either way, we've got to these screws. So it's just three screws, Phillips. Phillips head screws that hold it in place. All right, so undoing that, the whole base just pops out. So this is actually all completely solid, solid metal there with just this little track cut in for the wire to come through. So it comes through this back port here, just runs straight down and then just through this little connector into the actual board, which we'll have a look at in a sec. But this, on, on the other Space Mouse, this just has a bigger slot cut into it for the battery to sit in there. And for this specific mouse here, there's a whole bunch of little drill, drill bits, or drill, drill holes out of the actual metal. So I'm not sure why that's done. That's, that's usually done for balancing to make sure this is well, no, things are balanced, you, you tap them and drill a little bit out, but no real idea why that's done here, because this doesn't need to be balanced, it doesn't really matter how this sits on the actual um, surface. And I don't really see it correspond, maybe it does correspond to these screws actually, so this goes in this way. Yeah, so, so, so some of, it's going to be really hard to see up here on camera anyway, but some of these some of these screws, these big three screws that protrude at, out, two of them do align up with these two holes, and then the third one, I guess, just sits over that cable. So maybe that's where the idea came from, and they just need a bit of clearance because on the side, as we've got these buttons, these little prongs here stick out. Again, it's probably going to be hard to see, but yeah, this, this here and this here, these two stick out on each side, 
which actually pretty nicely corresponds to these holes here. So these two on the side and then these two on the side. So okay, that makes sense why they've done that, but it seems like quite a bit of effort to actually then just drill those extra holes. But they're already, they would already have this in a, in a place, drilling these big three holes out and then um, those two channels there as well. So they may as well just tap a few more holes in there too, to, to clear that. Surprised they didn't actually just, just protrude this plastic out a little bit further by, by even just a few millimeters that would give this enough clearance and that would have saved them from doing that. And the only real effect that would have had was just a little bit more plastic here and the whole mouse would actually just stick up a little bit higher. Or again, they could have machined the whole thing a bit lower. I don't know, there must be a reason that's what they decided to do, but either way, that's the base, really nice and sturdy, solid, solid bit of metal there. So that can sit on the side. And then we've got basically all the electronics here. So that, that's the bottom there. Got this, this board here. There's nothing really in this side except for a bunch of exposed contacts. We likely have a programming port there as well. Or, or the, these six pins um, are, would be for serial programming. And then just a bunch of other little exposed tabs there for programming or testing or, or so on. And then a bunch of screws holding that in place. The other thing, there is this little, this little bit of exposed wire sort of there. I'm not exactly sure where that is, but I, I would assume, oh, it says ground, okay, it says ground on both points. So I assume that would press down against this metal bit and just contact onto it, just so grounding this whole thing. So that could also act as a bit of a shield down the bottom as well, or just um, reference frame it as well. And then as I sort of mentioned before, we've got these buttons that have that really nice click on each side and they're just I'm not sure if it's actuates enough yeah i can't really see that but it just has this metal metal rod holding it in place and then it's just injection molded bits there it looks like it presses a button on the other side of this pcb so there's just two more screws holding this small little pcb in place here they're actually really nice and short screws too they come off right away see if that just comes apart now and we can have a look under there. Awesome, there we go. That thing just pops right off. And we've got this PCB here. So as I mentioned, just a bunch of exposed contacts on that side and then this little grounding thing. And then on the other side, we've got this red bit there is just a, a pin and a socket on the other side that just connects to more boards under there. And then on each side here, we've got these buttons that are just quite difficult to press actually like this, but quite little, little buttons, just little tactile buttons that get pressed. One on each side. Then we've got the actual connector for the USB cable that plugs into to get the power and the communications through. Underneath the sticker, there's just a little IC so a little microcontroller, take that off. I can see that better now. So just a little microcontroller, an Atmel, Mega 3214, I think it says. So that's just gonna be a, a little microcontroller that will actually be doing a bunch of the thinking for this. And then the board is just filled up with a whole bunch of small little components just capacitors, resistors, a um, couple of LEDs as well. We've got a little crystal oscillator there as well. That will just be just be used to provide a really precise frequency or oscillation um, to the actual microcontroller there. So if you want to have a better look at that, and just pause the video and, and have a look what's actually there. But a lot of magic. Awesome. Oh, I, this actually shows these buttons as well. I'm going to see that a bit better. So. These little flaps here, you can see that movement there, that just actuates it as I press the button on the outside. This just transfers it and, and pushes it up, which corresponds to, to these two buttons on the side. So it sits right onto that button and it just pushes that down, clicking that button. I'll put this little sticker back on. Not sure what this is, I think it's just a little sticker to, to mark maybe the board of firmware revision or something like that. All right, and then further into this actual sensing component, we've just got three more screws here. So I'll undo those and we can see what's underneath there. 
Okay, that's nice. That just loosens that just loosens this little black ring that sits around. This really just holds the two buttons on the side and just a little bit of spacing. Okay, and then we've got the actual movement board or oh, assembly, I guess, but it's got a PCB there. And this is this is the actual bit that moves. So there's three more screws holding this together again. Same as in the previous version, actually, they used sets of three screws to hold sort of each layer together. So they must have just carried that same design over to this one. But again, there's no reason why to change it. Three works, holds it steady. This is just, I can't tell, just some sort of a spacer, a little, little bit of a divider, I guess, that mounts onto this board here. But that's interesting because this just has the three screws here and then this here just mounts onto the three extra standoffs there as well. So I don't see why this actually needs to be in place because they could have just mounted this straight onto that bottom board and just designed it slightly differently to have a little bit of extra space. So I don't know, maybe getting rid of those machining marks, making this a little bit taller and then mounting this straight onto there it eliminates a whole, whole extra bit and three extra screws or yeah, three extra screws. That's just my, my thoughts on it, I don't know. Again, there must be reasons for this that they chose in the design process. So I'm just undoing this extra screw here. And then I think we're gonna have to undo the other side as well. So I'll have a quick look at the board, I guess, from this angle. So we've just got that red connector there that connects onto the other PCB. And then we just have a couple more small controllers, microcontrollers there, a little inductor, and a bunch of other small little surface mount components. So if this is the same as the other one, and I don't see why it would be any different, then so we have changed it. What this does in here is it just has a whole bunch of LEDs and those LEDs shine a light in a certain array. And then there's corresponding photoresistors that actually pick up that light and change their resistance based on the different light and light angles, which is how the position of this is actually determined. So up the top here, I'm just, I just pop that plate off and I'm just undoing these three screws, which hold that sort of sensing array together onto this. So this again is just a little shell, which after, I think this one's a couple of years old or a few years old, you can see it starts to get a little bit scratch and it all gets a, all gets a little bit sort of rubbery and sticky or sticky. It is, it is a rubber finish, so it gets sticky. So. This is actually really nice to know if anyone is interested. If yours is like this, you could probably just buy an aftermarket bit or even an original replacement bit of this and then just replace it with that one, which this one is gonna need because this is getting really annoyingly sticky. But on a brand new one, there's no issues there at all. It's obviously really nice, nice feel to it. Awesome, all right, so that just clicks on and then yeah, this, this pretty much looks exactly the same as in the other one. So we just have a little spacer that just holds everything together so this mounts up onto the top and just holds that divider there this just has a little boot around it so this is just a a really kind of thin rubber boot and my best guess is that that's just around there to protect any maybe a little bit of moisture but mostly a little bit mostly components um fragments and dust and all that sort of stuff to getting into this because this is using led lights so it's pretty sensitive but it's enclosed in this and a couple of other layers of stuff. So probably not a big deal or quite hard for things to actually get in. But if they do, this is just an extra little layer, which is, which is nice to see, you know, why not? All right, so let's have a look at this. This doesn't really come apart that much more unless we break it, which I don't want to do because I plan to use this. So what we've got is we've got firstly, I guess, two PCBs. So the bottom PCB and the top, sorry, the other way around, actually. This is the bottom PCB that actually connects to that other motherboard. And then we've got this top PCB here. So let's look at it this way, I guess, at the right orientation. So on the top, we just have these little three millimeter diameter LEDs. So they're probably gonna be infrared LEDs. And then on the bottom, we just have a photosensitive component that will be detecting that light. So if I actually do turn this the other way around, cause it's just a little bit easier to show. These two LEDs here. So this one faces this way at, at an angle like that. And then this one faces at an angle like this. And both of those shine right in there. It's probably kind of hard to see on camera, but there's just a little four pin surface mount component over there that this shines to. So these two lights, there's, there's two, two kind of light beams coming in at the same time. 
like that. And then as the orientation of this changes, obviously the orientation of how the light comes in will also change. So they've done that three times. So we've got two LEDs here, and we've got two more LEDs here and two more here. So three sets of two LEDs, so six LEDs in total. And that's what we need because this is six degree of freedom. So we've got X, Y, and Z. We've got the movement along those ones, but then we also have roll, pitch, and yaw. So having those six LEDs and, and three receivers on top, but there's probably a couple of receivers per actual receiver. That's how they can become uh, and detect that movement of this very accurately and precisely there. Another really interesting thing to note, this again also looks very similar to the old version, but we've got these springs here that hold it in place. So again, there's, there's three springs and there's no other connection from this bottom PCB, from the bottom PCB onto the top PCB except for those springs. So those springs, there'll be a positive and a negative signal going through those springs that'll actually provide power for the LEDs that are sitting on the top. At the same time as that electrical connection, these springs actually provide that mechanical connection. So they provide, as you move the PCB, they actually provide that resistance there. And then they obviously spring back into place. And I think this little injection molded bit just slides right into sort of the middle of that. And then this all just gets mounted to this bracket. Actually, no, it does get mounted to the board. Ah, oh, yeah, okay, sorry. So the, this top bit gets mounted to, to the board, but this spacer actually gets mounted from the bottom. So through these extra three screw holes here, it holds this spacer in place. And then that spacer there just prevents excessive movement of this actual PCB assembly. So that's in, in place just to prevent this from being moved too much and any damage happening to those springs um, or sort of those LEDs or the components instead. And that's really nice to see because if that wasn't in there, this can actually get moved quite around a lot. So if that was fixed to this, someone could probably just pull that and, and yank this whole assembly off. But again, just having that simple plastic component in there just prevents all of that from being able to happen. So that's really nice to see. And I think that's it, that, that's that's all there is to it. This is actually, from what I remember, do watch that video, but from what I remember, this one had three boards or maybe there was just an extra complication because of the battery. But this just seems like a simpler thing. I'm not sure if it actually is a revised design. Let's see if I can find a date on this. 20, yeah, okay, so 20, wow, 2016. 10th of November 2016 is what the date on here is. This tiny little writing here. So this is actually quite old design, but there's probably not that much to improve. They've actually got it pretty good. The sensing works, it gets manufactured in quantity relatively cheaply. It's probably you know, as good as that's going to get. So why mess with something if it doesn't need to and if it works pretty well. Awesome. So that's it. Thanks very much for watching. Very much appreciate this. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. If you did, leave a quick like. It, it does help the channel out a lot. And if you do want to see more of this sort of stuff of just taking random gadgets apart and explaining how they work, at least on a higher level, then definitely consider subscribing. Very much appreciated. Awesome. So thanks very much. Have a good one.